Thank you, Bruce. Thank you, you know, Marilyn. Thank you, Carol, for sharing. Um, up here with a couple of awarenesses. First of all, that I have a short time with you this morning, about five to seven minutes. Um, second of all, that we're engaging a text that many of us have heard over and over and over and over again. And as we look at this text that is the heart of the gospel, we come at it this morning from 40, 50 different places this morning as we are in that many different places in our journeys, personally and together. But I think here's at least one thing that this text reveals to us. That we have our beliefs, we have our values, we have the callings that God has placed on our life. We have our seeking and searching for meaning and purpose in the divine in our lives. But if we just keep that to ourselves and unto ourselves, we miss the richness that life has to offer. It's when those things are brought into relationship with one another. It's when those things are brought into community that the Spirit is able to work. And I think we see that in this story this morning from John chapter 3. We'll see it next week as well with the woman at the well in John chapter 4. But here's Nicodemus, who's a teacher, who is an important person in his religious tradition, who is a Pharisee, which, who have gotten a bad rap over our years of Christianity. But Pharisees were those that were, that were trying that we're trying to see and figure out what faith looks like, how faith is best practiced. And there was something in the life of Nicodemus, something as he saw the ministry of Jesus bringing wisdom, bringing healing, bringing mercy and compassion, there was something that he was wondering about. And folks argue whether Nicodemus was asking for himself or if, if Nicodemus was sent by the religious community, and it doesn't really matter because if he was sent by the religious community, there was something that, that caused Nicodemus to volunteer and say, I'll, I'll do it. I'll go and talk to this one and see what it's about. And he followed that calling. He followed that spiritual curiosity. And we're told that he met with Jesus under the cover of night. Not entirely inappropriate. You know, during daylight hours, we have to, we have to get the work done. During daylight hours, we, we have to keep up appearances. And yet, in the cover of night is when our heart can let loose a little bit and our minds and our hearts wander and we're able to engage that which we're curious about. And do you notice his approach to Jesus is a little bit awkward, isn't it? He can't quite come to terms with admitting that he has this wonder and this curiosity. He says, we, deferring to the we, we know that you wouldn't be able to do the things that you're doing unless there was something special about your life. And it's like you get to the end of that and you say, well, Nicodemus, is there a question in there somewhere? And of course, the question lies underneath the words, what is this about? How do we engage eternal life? And so Jesus and Nicodemus begin this back and forth. And Jesus presses a little bit like any good coach or therapist or interlocutor does. Kind of presses Nicodemus you're a teacher in Israel, shouldn't you understand these things? 
And Nicodemus stays with him and continues to ask the questions. And one thing our faith teaches us is that we're willing to stay in there if we're willing to ask the questions the truth reveals itself jesus in matthew chapter 27 ask and it will be given to you seek and you will find knock and the door will be opened unto you and that promise is fulfilled in this interaction with Jesus and Nicodemus because Jesus breaks open (laughs) and shares this truth which is the heart of what we believe for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life And then Jesus expounds on that. For the Son of Man didn't come into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. For God so loved the world. And that word there is is more than just the planet Earth. For God so loved the cosmos. God so loved everything. Not just Adventists. We have several folks. Thank you oh so much for being here from the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And, and they're, they're celebrating this weekend the inauguration of their temple and just so appreciative of the part that we have played in that and they're going to come up in a little bit. Not just for Adventists. Not just for Congregationalists or congressionalists as every time Susan and Carolyn and I were just in a training call the other day and um, this is first congressional church right and I just I don't even argue anymore I said yes go ahead (laughs) not just for Adventists not just for congregationalists but for the whole cosmos and I didn't come into the world to condemn the world. Such a great reminder for us. If God didn't send Jesus into the world to condemn the world, then more than likely Jesus didn't, God didn't send me into the world to condemn the world or any of us into the world to condemn the world. The good news is this, that God is in the process of continuing to love all of creation into reconciliation. We're curious and hopefully in the midst of our seeking in our curiosity we receive this insight into the God into good news and then we have the opportunity to respond that whosoever believes And we could spend a month of Sundays on on what that means. But I love to start with theologian Paul Tillich's understanding that belief is just accepting the fact that we are accepted. And then how else do we respond? believe with all my heart that we respond by becoming stewards of this good news, of the incredible love of God. You see, this this good news isn't just for Adventists or Congregationalists, but you know what? Adventists and Congregationalists have the responsibility of being stewards of this good news. Pastor Machado yesterday, who's the president of the Florida Conference of the Seventh-day Adventists, reminded us of this so well. That this, this community together, these buildings, they aren't just for us. They are for us to steward and to live and to proclaim the good, great news of the love of God for the entire cosmos. 
So where are you now in the midst of this? You might be like Nicodemus and thinking, you know what? I've been doing my thing and things just aren't adding up. There's, there's got to be something more. And so maybe the still speaking voice of God is saying to you this morning, there is a whole lot more. There's the gift of, of the life of the ages, a life of meaning that can begin right now in this moment for you. Maybe you have heard that and have understood that and years ago accepted the fact that you are accepted. And maybe the voice of the still speaking God is is calling you, is calling me, is calling us to become even better stewards of the good news and the resources that God has entrusted us with. How might we respond? Let's pray together.